For our demonstration, we'll be using Character Animation Toolkit in 3D Max to animate the character rig and a bone system made out of boxes to animate the weapon. These are using the skin modifier. We use a script called Sticky Lock from Luke Maskell. Uh, you'll find this on scriptspot.com under Gibbon Tools. That's his handle. And uh, we use Scriptspot to handle animated alignment of the secondary hand to the weapon and we can use it for the magazine mesh to align that too. In UDK we use Matinee to play the animations in the level uh, rather than, just for this demonstration, rather than uh, creating a class in which there's functions that display and play the appropriate meshes and animation sequences uh, as required. We can do it in Matinee within the level faster and it's no coding involved. The first topic to look at is the actual 3D Studio Match Rig. We're using CAT well, this is not really a lesson in CAT, but you go to uh, CAT objects and helpers, choose CAT parent, and you can put one in there, and you have a whole bunch of presets you can choose. Ours is actually custom made to fit to our model, but you know, um, let's assume you're using this one here. It creates a little rig for you, and you can pose it and stretch it and move it around. Uh, unlike biped, it has a built-in um, foot plant system, which is nice. You can do all kinds of posing, uh, copy and paste to the other side. So actually if we delete this arm and we create another arm here by modifying the the hub. These are uh, a hub for the chest, a hub, sorry, hub for the pelvis, hub for the chest and a uh, hub for the head. But we can go add arm and it just duplicates with the parameters we had before. So it's rather easy to set up. To animate a cat you've got a in the motion panel you have a cat dialog. This is what you'll see when you first start, it's just setup mode and then you have to add an animation layer and you can name that animation layer. So we have this one here, let's add another one just for argument's sake. You add an animation layer, call it demo. You can then auto key your way through some change to the mesh. Another bar. And uh, this can be turned on and off. Oh, we're still in setup mode. Joy joy. We add a layer, we have to go to into animate mode, then we can animate it. So we can disable that layer and turn it on again by double clicking it. We can change the layer order, so now this layer is on top, it basically rules that one out. And you can wait between layers using a wait value. I'm not going to animate that change. You see it's kind of blending in between. Uh, but let's set it back to 100, and we'll delete this layer here. Effectively, everything we're doing is on the weapon test layer. You can see there's already keys for the animation there. And now we'll talk about IK targets for the hands. You might have noticed when it uh, is moving here, there's two arms showing. This is actually the forward kinematics bones. Uh, it's kind of like a ghost, and this is the IK target driven animation. Okay, so how to set up this IK target? Well, the first thing you have to do is create this IK target. You grab the hand, and then you'll see it like this actually. In the motion panel above the layer manager, there's limb animation, which is only showing up when you choose part of the arm, right? Uh, so on either side, and you choose limb animation, and you create IK target, which has already been done here. You can select the IK target. You can select the hand. You can select the IK target again. You can move the IK target to the palm location. Now there's a slider here, which is whether you're using forward kinematics, which will be a value of one or IK, you can't see any change here because they're in the same place, which is value of zero. You'll notice as we drag the time slider that by frame five, we're fully driven by IK and the IK target has been animated down to fit to a pose where it matches to the gun. You just have to be aware of what the weight is at a given time and it's a good idea to create a name selection for it. Okay, so on the, on the um, main hand here we could type in right IK okay. but I, I've also created a um, shortcut for the gun weapon uh, bone and we've created a combined gun and main weapon bone control too. These are just name selections that you type and press enter. Let's talk about the pivots that we're using for the gun and the bones for the gun. In this particular case the gun is just a set of boxes that the mesh is skinned to the first one is, probably I can show it in the 
select by name dialog here, you can see there's bone gun root, bone gun main is this one, uh, there's bone gun trigger which is inside there, it should be here actually, um, which is uh, going to control the trigger, we're not doing that right now actually. Then there's um, bone slide which is to knock this one back and forwards, the pin there. And then there's uh, bone gun secondary which is where the hand joins on. You probably should also have a bone gun uh, muzzle which lets you put on a muzzle flash, but you know this is just a demonstration. Uh, we don't need every single bone that's here actually, we don't need these two. We only really need to worry about the hands for what we're talking about. Um, so the bone, ga bone gun root is at zero zero zero, right? So is the cat rig um, pivot. You'll notice that uh, the IK target's location when it's holding the gun is where that bone is and the alignment of the two is the same. When I go into local mode, X faces towards the uh, wrist and the Z faces up. When I grab the gun main bone, the pivot is facing exactly the same orientation. This also works for the IK target for the secondary hand and the, the bone for the secondary hand's position on the gun. Okay, so that's the pivot situation. Now let's think about the animations we're going to deal with. The main animation we can just keyframe, you know, regular style, uh, 3 max keyframe. You turn on auto key, you key the position, it can be anywhere. You drag it to where you want it to go. Uh, we want it, These two poses here are not that necessary. This pose here is the one where the gun is kind of going into the hand pose. We want it to be there depending on where your gun is, and then we're animating a rotation and another movement and rotation. It's red for movement and green for rotate, so it's just a slight you know, pull out from the body, and that's it for the animation. Let's just add a new um, pose uh, where we dip it down. Sorry, I need to select both of those guys, the, the bone and the gun, and we can dip it down and maybe uh, pull it that way a bit. Hopefully we can get the hand there to line in there too. So how do we deal with the hand? Well, our method of doing this is just to use a script by Luke Maskell called Sticky Lock, which basically creates an animated align uh, in a frame range of your choice. So the first 10 frames of this is the guy moving his hand to grab a gun. Right? It's not actually a natural beginning point, we're just doing this for a demo. It's not a natural pose to have the, the gun hang in there in space, but you know, just to show you, we'd probably start this animation from frame 10. You know. um, so uh, the the align has to happen from frame 10 to frame 50, and you can see now we've added the change. We have to realign that hand. Now that's really difficult to do by keyframing it yourself. So we use the script, which in my case, uh, I'll just show you how you get it in there. You download it from the website. You copy it into the UI folder and it shows up in your customized UI interface. Um, under You can put it under quads for example. And you go find Gibbon tools because this is the handle of Luke Maskell and it's got sticky lock there. And so for example we could uh, drop it to, let's put it here, um, into the menu and save it. Save it as something. And then you are good and running and close that. We've already put it up here into that toolbar. Uh, you could create a hotkey for it, or you can find it there. Okay, so when you when you click it, you get this menu. Essentially, it's it's rather simple and nice. That's good. That's what's good about it. You can find out more at the website. You select the object that you want to align to something, right? So in, in our case, it's the IK target um, of the cat rig. The parent will be the secondary gun hand, and I'm just going to select it from the menu, from bone gun root, bone gun secondary, so I don't mess it up. Okay. Now what you want to do is set a fr frame range, and we've already worked out from 0 to 10 we don't want to change it, because that's the movement down, and 10 to 50 we want to bake it, so we press uh, every frame and bake. It's very, very fast. You won't notice the process happening at all, and but you can see already that it's now doing what we want it to do. Now there's a little bit of uh, overextension in the hand here, in the arm, so we could uh, maybe adjust about here, adjust the we get the right motion. We can adjust the arm down a little bit to compensate for the 
change in the, 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 the arm so it's not completely straight. And you can see that works really well, so you don't have to redo the hand at all. The nice thing about uh, Cat is um, on top of the sticky lock, you can, you know, there's many, many keys in the sticky lock, you can see every frame uh, it's hard to adjust. You can add a um, a layer which is called an adjustment layer, funnily enough, that lets you adjust the animation below it for a given bone. So we can call this IK roll just for fun, which means that, you know, about here maybe we could tilt the hand a little bit. Uh, we're not going to go crazy with the fingers or anything, but again, you can animate the fingers. So you see, maybe that would happen from frame 40. You have to click that key and drag along to frame 40. So we've got a little bit of hand roll at the end there. It's not that noticeable, and that's probably good. Okay. Let's unhide the body. Uh -huh. Unhide by name. Soldier, unhide. There he goes. So we have a reasonable example animation to play with. So we want to export this to UDK and uh, effectively get the exact same performance uh, in UDK as what we have here. But there's two steps we have to do. We have to export the skeleton and we have to export the gun. So grab the mesh for the body, which has the skin modifier on it, which includes all the soldier bones. And it's already been skinned. When you export the skinned model, it exports the skeleton with it. We go File, Export, Select Good. And save it as FBX. You want to locate this into your UDK folder, so go find UDK 11, UDK game content, oops, sorry, content, and let's put it into this folder here. I'm just going to um, save over these two guys, which I did for test. This is the character. Save, yep. And the properties for this are pretty simple. Um, you can probably get away with just doing the default, so long as animation is on. And I've turned on baked animation because you can see the frame range. And we've turned on resample all, although I'm not very sure it matters too much. And if you've got morph targets in your mesh, you turn that on, but we don't have. And that's it. You can now, I'm using the November UDK, so you can now see it to FPS 2012. If you're using an older version, you have to make sure your FPS version matches to it. And you can either choose binary or ASCII, it seems to work fine either way. Uh, you'll probably get some warnings about layers and uh, so forth. Uh, the idea is that um, you put your um, bones into layer mode so that UDK doesn't render them inside of UDK. There's a little bit of weirdness going on with this model, but this is not my model, uh, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, we'll just go with it. As long as it works in UDK, I don't mind. Let's export the gun the same way. Uh, file, export, selected, gun, save. So the same process again, we already set that up, so it's pretty OK. So that's all, that's the 3D Max part done. We can get rid of 3D Max and go to UDK.